G'day everyone and welcome to my first video tutorial about the Sony A7 II. As many of you would know, the Sony A7 II is not a current model for the Sony lineup of cameras, but there are many, many, many of us out there and many YouTubers don't bother teaching anything about the A7 II. So I've taken it upon myself to try and be a helpful voice for the Sony A7 II community. I do welcome any feedback and I'm gonna to continue to do this and hopefully be more and more useful to the whole A7 II community. Right now, you're seeing the view from my camera. I thought this would be the most helpful way for you to see exactly what I'm doing. And I'll try and do my best to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. Right now, you can see some information at the bottom of my screen. The one over 250, for those that don't know, represents shutter speed, which is how long my sensor is exposed to light. And at the moment, I've set it to one 250th of a second. So that's quite fast, but cameras can go much faster and much slower. Next to that, we have f5.6, which is the aperture. And that's a setting that I've just chosen for, uh, I'm going to use that as a reference for lots of learning. We will shift away from 5.6, but I'm teaching many things as a starting point, 1 over 250 shutter speed and f5.6 as our aperture. Next to that, you can see the square and it's got the plus minus 0, 0.0. That is reflecting our setting called exposure compensation. Now that's an important setting at the moment because ISO, I have set to auto. So right now we're in manual setting. I'm actually going to uh, adjust what is displayed on my screen. So if you were to look at the back of your camera, you would see a circular dial on the very back and at the top or the 12 o'clock position of that dial, it says DISP, which stands for display. So I'm just going to hit that right now. Now that's taken us to a display that has some uses, but I don't use this one a lot, but I do like the spirit level that you can see. I'm just going to uh, adjust my tripod and you'll see it going up and down. Right now I'm pointing up in the sky, so I've got to come down and now I'm pretty much level again there. And I'm going to tighten my tripod and leave it alone. I'm going to press the display again. And now you're seeing, well, you can see why I was pointing down a little bit on my there we go. So that's back where I wanted to be for my tripod. And this is a display option that's got lots of information. Um, and it can be quite useful for people that uh, want to have that all displayed to them at the moment. I typically don't use this setting. I typically go back to the one which I'll do shortly. But right now, I just want to point out to you on the left hand side, at the very top, we have a big M. That's showing that I'm in manual mode. That is selected by using the dial from the very top of the camera, which has got letters and numbers like M, S, A, P, and one and two and various things. I'm on M. That's a mode that is manual in most ways. So I've selected the shutter speed as I described. I've set the aperture as I've described. But in this instance, I have let the camera do auto ISO which I think is a very useful setting for beginners um, and the camera will select its own setting. Now, you'll hear a theme that I come up with a lot is that no camera is perfect. It cannot always work out what you want it to do. And much like that, the camera is trying to make sense of this scene and give me a balanced exposure. But if you look at that background, it actually looks quite gray but in real life, it's black. So the camera is doing its best, but it thinks the scene needs to be brighter um, to be properly exposed. But what we've ended up with is the black background has gone a bit gray. And I think that the doll in front of us, she's actually got brown skin, but it looks a lot lighter because the camera's trying to brighten it up too much. So I'm going to use the exposure compensation dial. If you look at your camera from the top, You'll see a dial that's got the numbers minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, plus two, plus three. 
That's a dial that we can use to say, hey, I know you're doing your best with auto ISO, but I would like to make it brighter or darker. And it's such a useful tool. So right now, I would like it to be a bit darker. I want my black to actually be black. And I would like my doll to show the lovely brown skin she's got. So I'm just going to go one, two, three. So now it says minus one because there's three steps to minus one, three steps to minus two. And that's a common theme you'll encounter with shutter speeds and apertures and everything. So now my doll actually looks like she's got brown skin. The black background looks black. I actually want to take it probably to about there. Now that looks about right. I'm not telling you to set your setting to minus 1.7. It's just something that I need to do. I'll just talk you through one other example where you might want to use your exposure compensation dial. If anyone's ever taken photos out on the snow, which is a predominantly white environment, the camera will think, wow, this is too bright, and it will try and it will make your snow look grey. And that's kind of like the opposite example of what's happened because I've introduced this black background. So the main thing I want you to take away from this is just use that dial to set it to make it look right to you. When you are in a pretty normal environment with not too much dark or not too much white, just make sure you always return it back to zero, zero. So I'm just going to flick it back uh, five times. One, two, three, four, five. Now it's back to normal setting. Just make sure you remember to do that. Otherwise, you may walk around and take photos that are far too dark or far too bright. But I'm back to minus 1.7, which is called one and two thirds of a stop. And that gives me the right um, brightness for the skin and the background that I've been after. But what I've mentioned earlier is I want to focus on autofocus. So we are in, if you look at the left hand side, well underneath the M, we have AFS, which means autofocus single. So the I'm going to do it now. I'm going to do a half press on the shutter. When I do that, you'll notice that it finds where it thinks focus could be, and it only does that once. So even if I held my button half pressed and I brought the doll closer, it's not going to find focus again now that the doll is closer. It is just going to take... It's going to sample the autofocus once. So that's what the S stands for, single. Just one time it's going to take the autofocus. So that's what that's doing there. Now, underneath AFS on the left-hand side, you'll see an icon that represents that we're in the wide autofocus area. I'm just going to press the FN button on the back of the, of the camera, and you'll see I can go left and right. I'm using the... Um, the circular wheel on the back of the camera as a directional pad. So there's our AFS. I'm going to click on that. I could pick some other choices. I'm not going to discuss them too much now. AFC will come up, but here's AFS. I'm just pressing the middle of the uh, circular wheel at the back, and we're back to AFS. So now I press FN again to get into our function menu. I press that, come across. Now see how the it says focus area across where the doll's face is, and I am currently orange is highlighted on that icon. That represents the wide focus area. We have other choices, zone, center, flexible spot, which if you see the arrows pointing left and right, it can be flexible spot small, flexible spot medium, flexible spot large, and then coming down again, we have lock on AF, flexible spot medium, which is not actually available in AFS. You don't need to remember all that. We're only going to mention wide and a couple others today. But right now, I'm in the wide focus area mode. So wide is uh, quite useful at times, um, but we really need to understand how it works. We have told the camera, I would like you to pick where to focus from a large area of the screen. A wide area of the screen is available for focus to be selected. So I'm going to do a half press. And each of those boxes is where the uh, camera can see at least a small part of something to focus on. And it even picks up small things like just a tiny portion of the top of the doll's little bun on its head. 
Um, but what we're noticing here is that we've got a pretty uncomplicated scene. Our doll is uh, nice and central, and it is the closest thing to the camera. So that is when wide um, focus area is ideal because it really it's going to pick the closest and it's going to pick the most central where possible. So that's what we've done there. Now, as we go further away, make well, I'm shifting the camera to the left to make our doll less central. Now, it's still picking up the edges of the doll, but if I go far enough, it can no longer find the doll, or at least the focus area is not selecting the doll. See, we're even catching just a hint of the doll's hair there inside the green box. Now, a little bit out of the way, and it is gone. No more doll in the focus area. So it really is uh, some limits to where it will pick from, and it's trying to go for the closest and the most central. There's actually a setting that is not on by default that I'd like us to change. What we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to hit the menu button. It's on the back of the camera to the left-hand side of the viewfinder. So I'm pressing that now. Now you can see across the top there's some icons for different types of menus items. I'm right and I want to get into the second set of menus, the third option. So this is the first set of menu options, second set of menu options, third option. Coming down, phase detect area. It's off. I want to change that to on, and I want to press the menu button to get out again. Now, you can probably now see that we've got a bracket across the center of the screen, and it roughly correlates with where the wide focus area will select for focus. See, she's still inside that bracket. We're just getting that as I come out of the way. It's now not getting here anymore, and in fact, it's getting the corner of my laptop screen because it has just come in on the right-hand side bracket of that area. And out here, it's just picking the background, and it's actually having a little bit of try trouble. So I'm hoping that's making some sense for you. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce a second doll to complicate things a little bit better, a little bit more to illustrate how this autofocus works. Now, the face of this new doll is six inches or 15 centimeters closer to the camera. So right now is actually a little opportunity to illustrate what's called depth of field. The dark skinned doll is in sharp focus and the light skinned doll to the left of our screen is out of focus. So that shows us that the uh, aperture that we've selected and the distance we are from the uh, subject and also the focal length of the camera, I'll, I'll talk about depth of field in detail in another video, have all contributed to having our focal area quite accurate here. But even though it's only six inches or 15 centimeters, this doll is not in focus. Um, ways to bring both dolls into focus at the same time would be several ways to do it, but the one to do it without shifting the camera would be to change our aperture to a higher number. The higher the number is, more will be in uh, in focus. But that's a topic that I'll expand on at another time. I'll just adjust that now briefly so you can hopefully see the difference. I'm gonna adjust it all the way up to 11, which is pretty high, do that focus. And our light skin doll is less out of focus than previously. I could even go extreme, go up to 18. And now our light skin doll is much more in focus. Let's even take it to 22. They're largely both in focus. There's reasons why you don't want to use F22, but right now I'm just going to shift back to 5.6 because having it at 5.6 helps illustrate to us what is in focus and what is not in focus. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come across here and you can see that the light skin doll has now entered into the bracketed area. But I've also told you that the light skin doll is six inches or 15 centimeters closer. So I'm gonna half press for focus and now it has chosen the light skin doll. So we can learn from this that our wide area focus or wide focus area likes to pick the closest thing in the box. And that box is the one that's only come about because I turned on phase detect area 
on the settings previously. So for anyone who missed it, I'm going to press the menu button, and you can see there it's it's in the um, it's in the menu selection under the cog for the settings, and then the third menu in, and the third one down phase detect area on, and that is what let me see um, the area that wide focus area is relying on. So I think that's really useful for people to try and better understand how their wide focus area works. I hope that's making sense for you. I'll just do a few also. Focus, whoops, focus here, clearly on our light skin doll. Focus here, our light skin doll still drawing focus because she is still inside that bracketed area. Now I'm gonna deliberately go a little bit past. Now we're back to our uh, darker skinned doll drawing focus. So I hope that's been really helpful for you in understanding how that works. I'm hoping that my camera didn't just stop there. Um, the screens never went on. Anyway, so that's autofocus um, single. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try autofocus continuous. So I'm going to press the FN button. We're going to change this to AFC for continuous autofocus or autofocus continuous. You're going to notice one thing in particular. So two things. On the screen right now on the left-hand side, AFC is now written instead of AFS to let us know that we are in continuous autofocus. So now I'm going to do the half press. And as you'll see in our bracketed area, we only have the dark skin doll. So let me just half press. So we've got something quite different. Instead of the large squares that just have the corners of the squares, we've now got much smaller squares. Now, even though I'm on a tripod and the camera isn't moving much or almost at all, we're still having some movement. So when I let go of the half press now, that goes away. In fact, you can see my finger in the in the shadow there. That's kind of cool. I didn't mean that. So I find this more reliable for assessing where the focus is going to be. Because if you were to look at the doll right now, the doll's knees are about five centimeters closer to the camera. And sometimes when we're in AFS, which I'll switch to now, I'll do a half press. So there's a whole range of areas that the camera thinks it might focus on. And if I'm just going to adjust the angle a little bit. Coming down here. Here we go. I'll do that again. So, well, ironically, it hasn't picked her knees at all, which is what I was trying to focus on. But it certainly has picked up the edges of the box that she's sitting on and also her face. And there is actually um, a little bit of difference between how close her face is and the edge of the box. It's not huge, but when you're shooting at smaller apertures, even 5.6 can be small if you're close. F4, F2.8, anything like that, you really need to be confident that the, cameras is focus the camera is focusing on the area you want. So I'll just press that again. So I'm going to go back to AFS. So I have, this is one of the primary reasons I like AFS. So there's two things. I know exactly where it's focusing, but also if it was moving, the focus readjusts as the uh, subject is moving closer or further away. So that's really quite valuable. There are downsides to AFC, which I'll mention later, but not right now. So that's the thing I really wanted to show you there. And that's all still using the wide autofocus area. So you can see here, we're now getting her chest and a little bit of her face coming up here. It's now largely getting her face. And her face is um, only very, there's not a big distance between how close or far away any part of her face is to my camera. So any shot will be in focus on her face. I'll just do that right now. Press the button to come in and have a look. Oops, what did I do? Oh, here we go. Have a look at the photo. We zoom in. We see we've got really sharp focus on her face there. So I'm going to press the button to come out of looking at the photo. There we go. And away from taking the photos. So I want to shift to one other thing, and it's the setting that I like to use most for autofocus. I'm going to press the FN button. 
I'm going to go to the focus. Oops, go to the oops. What am, what am I doing wrong? There we go. Focus area. Um, wide. I, I I just struggle with wide because I want to be in more control. Now zone is quite useful. It's not the one I'm talking about necessarily, but you can. It's like the um. It's like wide, but you're actually saying, well, I'd like wide, but I'd like it to be mostly over to the left. So, for example, if you were photographing one of your children playing baseball and they were the batter and you were shooting and they were on the left-hand side of the screen, you could actually pick this choice. And even though they're on the left-hand side of the screen, by choosing a zone over there, they will be able to draw focus. You can go down. So there's basically, I think, what's that, nine positions for this. I'll just return it to the center. But that's that was just a quick overview of that one. It's not really the one I was trying to show you. What I like to do when I have time and I have control, I come over here to flexible spot. I'll pick flexible spot large just for uh, a demonstration purpose. And we've got now got a relatively large square that we can move around the screen. As you'll see, the square has got up, down, left, and right. So while we're doing this, I can change this. I'm going up and down with the wheel button. And in fact, I can change the size as well. I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to change it to small. So right now, it's on the knee of the light colored doll. But what I'm going to do, our cameras, we have actually have some custom buttons. And if you look at the very top of your camera, there's a button called C2 or Custom 2. I'm going to press it right now. And it's brought up the ability for me to change where the focus area is. And because we're in focus area, flexible spot, small, we have that small area on the knee of the doll. Now, if you look across to the right hand side of the bottom, our two dials, front and back, will actually let us adjust it. So I'm using, in this case, the front dial to go up and down and the rear dial to go left and right. So I can actually move that. And then when I'm happy with it, I can either press the middle of the rear circular dial or I can just press the uh, shutter. There you go. So now that is the only area where, shutter, where the camera will select focus from. So this is ideal when you need to pick a face out of a crowd, when you're trying to get a bird on a branch, a whole range of options this is useful. So I'm actually going to show you that right now, if I want to photograph the face of the light-skinned doll, the wide area would not suit me now, but I might want her to be on the far left-hand side of the screen. So what am I going to do? I'm going to press Custom 2 button, which is on the top. Press that now use my uh, dials to adjust where it is. I can do all this while still looking through the viewfinder. I don't have to take my eye off the viewfinder. Now, can you see what's happened? I can take a shot of her. Let's have a look at that. Press the play button. She is in perfect focus. Now, there she is. Okay, so that is exactly what I wanted, and I can zoom out. So that is a very useful um, uh, focus area mode to use. So I can press C2 again, and you'll see that the dials are appearing on the screen in the bottom corner. But you'll notice there's also a trash can. It says return to center. So I'm going to press the trash can right now. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Excuse me for that one. I will press C2 on the very top and then press trash can. And it is returned to the center. You can see it on the edge of the face of the doll with the uh, darker skin. And half press my shutter and it's locked in. So I find that really useful. So sometimes I might be photographing a concert and there will be a musician. I can put that right on their face and know that I'm going to have their face in focus no matter 
if the guitarist is swinging their guitar wildly uh, right next to the singer, um, and if that singer moves around, it also gives me the ability to either recompose by shifting my camera around, or I can quickly press the C2 button, use my dials to relocate the focus area, and then just take my shot, and it will lock that focus area to my new location. And of course, you might want to try a bigger one if you're shooting a big target. But if you're trying to pick your child out of the school assembly, you really want that small one. So what I might do is I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very, very much for anybody that has watched all the way through. This is my first attempt at making a video, and I really do welcome input uh, and feedback. And thank you so much for making it through to the end.